quiet and calm in its Pacific isolation, lovely Norfolk Island belies its history of violence and adventure since Captain Cook discovered it in 1784. Yesterday a grim convict settlement, today the home of many descendants of the mutineers of the Bounty. Its coastline has no harbours, and ships which make the 930 mile journey from Sydney stand off the coast to unload onto small craft. Nowadays, 6,000 feet runways can accommodate the biggest existing planes, and a fortnightly service from Australia is supplemented by regular flights from New Zealand. The airport was built as a wartime measure by Australia and was used as a staging point by Allied aircraft en route to Pacific Station. Now the Qantas Air Service is a boon to inhabitants and to the rapidly developing tourist traffic. The serenity of Norfolk and its freedom from income tax combine to make the island a near utopia. Its Norfolk pines are indigenous. The volcanic soil nurtures a charming variety of subtropical to tropical vegetation. The pines, once considered suitable for ship's masts, first attracted the attention of mariners. The centre of Kingston is the second oldest British settlement in the Pacific and site of the old jail and the present government headquarters. The main street still bears the old convict title of Quality Row. The original barracks are now administrative offices. There's no shopping centre, but this is typical of several stores. Many of the buildings of the old convict days are now home for islanders. Nowadays, the bounty descendants enjoy the comfortable tranquility of Norfolk their trace of Tahitian ancestry finding expression in the love and cultivation of flowers. The cable station in Anson Bay handles most of the island's business communications from the mainland. From time to time, a ship of the New Zealand Cable Service carries out any necessary repairs to the cable. convict-built wharf is another historic spot, and the ruins of the whaling station in the background is a reminder of the time when the islanders harpooned the valuable monsters from open boats. The wharf is one of the two places where cargoes can be transshipped. In this house was born William Charles Wentworth, early Australian explorer and statesman. The decay and disrepair of such convict buildings as the old stables and the main jail are not due only to their age. They were burnt and almost raised by bounty descendants on their arrival from Pitcairn. The mutineers' descendants were men of liberty, hating the jail atmosphere. There were once 2,000 convicts on the island. Inside the jail is the site of the old gallows where many a prisoner gave his life for trivial breaches of regulation. And through a hole in the jail wall, the island's war memorial makes a strange contrast of servitude and liberty. The dungeons are grim relics of the convict occupation from 1788 to 1855. This primitive plough was once drawn by convicts. In this sylvan setting there is history, for below is the infamous Bloody Bridge, where during its construction convicts killed a guard and bricked up his body in the stone but his blood seeped through to disclose the crime. Tragic memory around such an idyllic scene. After this revolt, 20 executed convicts were buried in a common grave under that mound, unhallowed ground outside the regular cemetery area. The headstones themselves tell much of the island's early history. Sharing this sad company are the graves of free islanders, and Mother's Day sees a special effort in caring for graves and headstones. Some bear names famous in Pacific history, Christian, Buffett, Adams, Quintal, and McCoy. Today, the population, about 900, engages in farming. 
Ephraim Adams, who plows his land today, is proud of his bounty history. Australian and New Zealand settlers have augmented the original stock. Older Christian's garden and that of Ben Nobbs, the oldest councillor, are typical of the island's productivity. Edible fruits grow wild, and the local lasses find guavas sweet to taste. Such spider webs, it's claimed, are strong enough to weave into fishing lines. Here's another fish story. Norfolk, an angler's paradise, has everything from shrimps to eight feet long hapuka. But the unique catch is the dream fish, a meal of which is said to induce vivid nightmares. The oldest inhabitant of Norfolk is Hugo Quintal, who at over 90 years of age can still chop the day's wood. Harry Quintal makes tortoiseshell ornaments, both as a hobby and a business. Mrs. Nobbs is a descendant of the Reverend Nobbs who brought Christianity to Pitcairn 17 years after the mutiny. The public school, molded on part of the New South Wales educational system, accommodates up to intermediate standards. Thereafter, children go to the mainland for further secondary education. When they call the roll, there's sure to be a preponderance of Christian, Quintal, Knob, Buffett and Adams. For the five families make up half the population. The Tahitian strain is evident. The boy is present holder of the name Fletcher Christian, sixth generation in direct descent and that's a bounty gun. But today the islanders share the past with the present. Bly is forgotten in a round of golf over 18 picturesque holes. Or a rubber of bowls. The game's made even more sociable because everyone knows everyone else. The pine-dotted parklands are like the English countryside. And although the island has 40 miles of roads and plenty of cars, riding has more charm and romance. A happy isle where life is simple, unhurried, and unworried. In happy banter and daily conversation, the islanders speak a quaint dialect part Tahitian and part English West Country. One of Norfolk's show places and community centres is the Patterson Memorial Chapel, built by Melanesian Mission Labour. Today, law-abiding, God-fearing islanders make their Sabbath visit. The marble work and decorations in shell mosaics were by students from the Solomon Islands. carved and inlaid, the ends of the pews are the best of Pacific native craftsmanship. This design is inlaid in pearl shell. And this is hand carved. The island is proud of its church, its beauty, its tradition. The Burne Jones stained glass windows are an inspiration for simple folk who sing their own song in thanksgiving for the rich beauty and peace of Norfolk Island.